There is only one reason someone would assemble IKEA lock table. Ugh. To put a 3D printer on it, obviously. God, it's dusty in here. You know, video is gonna be fun when I've got glasses on. Hey guys, welcome to my garage. We're here to talk about safety. But first, I'm gonna tell you what I'm doing. I'm moving a 3D printer to a garage for a couple of reasons. One of them is uh, I've got a second printer coming and it's stuck somewhere between uh, China and UK. So once that's gonna come, uh, this Octopi enabled printer is gonna be in a garage, I can monitor, we're using a camera and it's obviously connected to the internet. But there is a one safety concern. So leaving your print in progress unattended is a big no-no in a printing community, even though everyone does it. Uh, but it makes perfect sense to take some safety precautions so you could sleep peacefully at night, right? But coincidentally, Xsense reached out to me via email to take a look at their smoke detectors. And I thought like, this is probably something I'm gonna need in a garage since there isn't one. And leaving a printer here without one would be pretty silly. So this is XS01 and this is wirelessly interconnected smoke detector. And knowing that I'm going to print in a garage, then send me three of them so I could test a couple of things out. These are smoke detectors, which means they have a photoelectric sensor inside and aim at detecting particles in the air. They're not good for carbon monoxide, so if you want to detect this, you'll have to use something else, which they also have on their website, but these are predominantly for smoke. They operate on a CR123A battery. Is it 123A battery? CR123A battery, which is supposed to last for five years and the sensors are rated for 10 years of usage time. So let's talk about connectivity. These aren't smart, not in a usual way. They're not connected to Wi-Fi, but they do come with RF signals included and they talk to each other using RF868 megahertz. Now this means that you can space them up to 200 meters apart, something I've not tested personally, but I've tested them around the house and they were able to talk to each other. And when one of them goes off, all of them go off, which is great for a situation like that because I probably wouldn't hear a siren from the garage. And if I even did, I would probably assume this is, this is my neighbors messing about with their alarm, which they often do. So if anything happened in the garage, I would receive individual alarms on each unit placed probably at home. Uh, then I would receive individual alarms on each unit. And one is permanently mounted in a kitchen and one in my office, because those are the rooms that I consider high risk. Setting these up, it's incredibly simple. All you have to do is just remove the tag to uh, enable the battery. But before you start testing it, do yourself a favor and cover it with your uh, hand to decrease the noise level. They're not particularly loud, they're only 85 decibels, but enough to actually upset your ears. To link units together, all you have to do is press the buttons four times on one unit and then follow the same instructions on the second one. And within a couple of seconds, they're gonna be powered up. I've managed to test and pair all three units within a minute, so that's how easy it is. Installing this is super simple, there are two screws and a bracket, that's it. But before you start installing them, just check in the user's manual, because there are a list of uh, places that you should not mount the smoke alarm. They're called a dead air uh, spots, and they should be avoided. Right, I guess it's time to put it back where it belongs, and let's have some fun. If everything has been done all right, none of them should trigger if I light up this many candles. So let's do this. So far, so good. But a little bit of paper and plastic should, at least I hope, it should set it off. Now, one of the disadvantages of running this experiment in the garage is that I have a gaps everywhere, which means there is a plenty of draft. So, so far, the alarm stayed silent. It's not placed directly underneath it in purpose. So, I've created a little bit of smoke, so let's uh, give a quick test. 
Yeah, it's definitely working. All of them. <laughs> I set it up again. If the alarm is triggered by one of these devices, all you have to do is just to press the silent alarm button. Now, if you press the silent alarm button on the device that triggered the alarm, it will silence all of them. However, if you press the silent alarm on any of the linked devices, it will only silence the linked devices, leaving the main alarm that uh, detected the smoke operational and, uh, well, the siren still running until you go there and deactivate it. Now the cooldown period is nine minutes. So if you press the button on that unit for nine minutes, it will be in a stand down time and it will resume the normal operation and the smoke detection after nine minutes. I guess I'm going to sleep slightly better knowing that there is a smoke detector in a garage as well. And even though I probably won't be here in time to save the print or the printer, uh, it won't gonna burn my house down. So if you're interested in uh, the video description, you'll find a link uh, to this particular device and uh, well if you're running prince of the night and you don't have a smoke alarm right now you better get one all right guys don't try anything like this at home and don't play with hard fire i hope you'll never get to test these in a real life situation and i hope the same for me as for now guys if you're interested in more videos then obviously follow me on social media you know how to do it you know how the youtube works i'm not going to explain you all that so yeah just like and subscribe or whatever as for now thanks so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video take care bye